I'm pleased with my performance thus far. I'm actually doing pretty well. I uh, have no idea, <laughs> um, but you know, you haven't. No one's died yet, which is great. Hello and welcome back to another episode of PlayStation Underground. Uh, this is Zach Miner. I am here with Sid Schumann. Why, hello. Hey, Sid. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different on Underground. Usually we're checking out the, the newest and the hottest games. Today, we're going to take a game that I've never played, mm -hmm. but is one of your favorite games of all time. Yeah, It's incredible. I've played uh, more Darkest Dungeon in the last year or two than I've played probably anything else. So why don't you show it to me and see if you can kind of convince me to put it next to my queue. Okay. And I'll tell you why I think this is such a perfect fit for you. Okay. Is you love XCOM. You I love do. XCOM too. Yes. The high anxiety, high tension games. I love them too. Yep. And I've been shocked and maybe a little chagrined that uh, you haven't actually checked out Darkest Dungeon. So we are diving in here to the new Crimson Court DLC that actually is just like a week or two old at this point. Right. Pretty new. And it adds a ton of new mechanics and new elements, things I think that uh, just anyone would be interested in. But uh, I wanted to jump in here to uh, ho hopefully an encounter with the Fanatic, who is this new, um, if you remember Resident Evil 3 and the Nemesis. Oh, sure. Uh, this is similar to that concept. So okay. in Crimson Court, um, you can see here my little, my little uh, makeshift rag, ragtag party. Uh, there are most of them, all of them actually, are infected with uh, the Crimson Curse which is a sort of vampiric uh, bad news wasting disease sure. that is incurable, at least at this point in the game. And, you know, there's, there's, this, there's this kind of mechanic where uh, there's blood that you need to drink. I'm out of blood. So my characters are actually in pretty bad shape right now. All right. There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's, there's a, a lot, lot going stuff, on here. stuff happening right there's now. There's a lot going on here. Fundamentally, though, and again, like I said, the reason I think you're going to like this game is because it is a turn-based tactics game uh, set in a very different playing field than XCOM, but with many of the same principles. Uh, okay. Permadeath, uh, and a whole lot of other things. Okay. Are we, are we in a procedurally generated area here? We are. Now, do you, can you see that little trap on the lower right there? I'm going to try and disarm it. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh. You like that? I had not seen that. S now, look at the map on the lower right-hand corner there. Yeah. It's telling you, it's giving us a lot of information. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell, tell me what, what I should read from that information. Okay, so I just found a secret room here because I rolled a successful scouting. Uh, oh. Okay. I forgot to put my key in there. I still got oh. some good stuff out of it. Wait, so, you can see my inventory on the lower right there. Um, and the inventory game in this is... Uh, Pretty robust. It's it's not on like a Diablo, you know. So I've only got a few slots to spare. I've got torches. Uh, look at the top of the screen there as uh -huh. I light my torches. As I light torches, the game gets a little easier. As ah. the torchlight begins to fade, it gets harder and harder. Okay, that's a cool mechanic. It is a cool mechanic. And it, I'm assuming that it also kind of affects what you can see. No, oh. it's purely um, if you wanted to. Oh boy, I got poisoned by a trap. So that that all of that and more is possible in Darkest Dungeon. So I'm really Is that that's not This our is guy, not is okay. actually our guy. This is not the fanatic. This is the collector. He is a mini boss as well. So did you have any idea so it's it's room based it seems. Yes. Did you have any idea when you stepped into this room that this guy would be here? No. Okay. I could see there I think I saw that there was uh, no, we're in a hallway right now. So I did not see him, no. Okay. Interesting. So this guy is going to keep summoning these heads. Okay, so so you go in order of kind of so, sorry. It rolls based on a speed stat. So it's essentially uh, if your character has high speed, they have a much higher chance of going early in the turn. So this is my leper here. He's a tank. Mm, he can't okay. really do much with the back uh, rows there. That's almost kind of like a JRPG mechanic. Kind of right, like. Great uh, narration in this game, by the way, by the uh, the great Wayne June. Yes, indeed. Um, obviously, you have talked about this uh, game many, many times. Many times. Um, perhaps uh, the most talked about game from you on the PlayStation broadcast. Could be. I mean, say. I've been doing that broadcast for seven or eight years, but it's up there. Fair. It's up yeah, there. That's you true. Know? That's true. Okay. At least in my, certainly in my term on it. Yeah. It's... Very, very difficult. I, I do know a thing or two about it these days, so I'm pretty efficient at getting through this. As you can see, I'm making short work out of this guy. Yeah, I, I think you you played it for um, maybe like a year before you actually like completed it, right? That's right. So I just put a bleed on him. He's going to okay. take damage over time. 
So are these are these class based characters? They are, yeah. Okay. And so, so up front, I've got my leper. He's a tank. He's a he's a brute. He does huge damage and takes a lot of damage. He can self heal. Um, on the to his left, right, right here's my leper. So I can do you know this is a one. I can attack one enemy or I can attack two for a little less damage, but I'll probably go for two because these these guys are kind of weak. Uh, this is my Vestal. She's essentially classic healer, but she okay. has some offense too, okay. and she just makes sure work out of that guy. Nice. So we're moving nicely here. Uh, this is my essentially rogue. He's a highwayman, okay. uh, is what his name is. So he's a very versatile fighter. So he's doing a repost right there. That that move just gave him a repost. I think that's how you pronounce front. that. Yeah. So he it moved him up front. So the placement of where the characters are placed is critical. Different skills for each of those characters are only available depending on what position they're in. Oh, you see what I mean? So interesting. I put that crossbow, uh, the the uh, archer or whatever. Oh. I put her in the back because she's nearly useless up front. She has to stay in the back. Makes sense. Yeah. Whereas this guy, my um, my my leper, is getting dangerously close, getting pushed so far back he can't attack. Wow. Oh, that was a bad move. And uh, sorry, what's the number at the top of the screen there? Uh, that's the torchlight level. Ah, okay. I'm not entirely sure how that works, to be totally honest with you. So she just actually attacked one of my characters because she's fiending for for blood. Uh, oh. She is. She has been infected. All of them are infected with the crimson curse, and it begins to make them act irrationally. Okay. So they might attack each other. Must find blood, as you can see. And I got this all wrapped up. Nice work. Thank you. Oh, I got a good item there. That's a very rare item. Ooh. I'll take it. Lots of good loot in this game. Okay. So let's keep moving here. I'm real curious to see if we find this uh, uh, fanatic. So I'm bleeding. I can use a bandage to patch it up so I stop taking damage over time. There's a, there's a lot to take in with this game. Yeah, I'm feeling <laughs> a little overwhelmed. Um, so obviously we're trying to lure this fanatic, but if we were not interested in that, could you potentially have cured your uh, your party? Uh, with of this Crimson Curse? Yeah. Uh, not as of yet, at least not in the... I, 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 I've I heard you can find a cure later in the game, but it's part of the storyline. Got it. So once these folks are infected, that's it. And I have to keep feeding them blood or okay. they deteriorate, essentially. Right. Ooh, that was a good hit. So um, this game is uh, permadeath based. It is. Correct. Um, and... You have a kind of a larger pool of characters, is that right? I have 30 okay. characters. I've, wow. bu I've built it up as big as it can go. Now, see, a movement skill was just applied to my Vestal there, so she got knocked up front. Terrible situation I'm in right now. I got to move her back. I had to just basically waste a turn there, just moving her ah, out of the way. So, okay. bam. Oh, that was a bad idea, too. I just moved her right back. <laughs> I'm pleased with my performance thus far. I'm actually doing pretty well. I uh, have no idea, um, <laughs> but you know, you haven't. No one's died yet, which is great. Now, a critical thing here I haven't even talked about with this game is the uh, the concept of stress. So this game is not so much about uh, your health meter, as although you can see it there. It's the red meter under each character. The real damage, so to speak, in this game comes from stress, and those are the white blocks underneath. My, my life bar there. Okay. Stress right there. I just took 13 stress. So his little white meter there is building up now. And stress, if uh, we may see it here in a little bit, but stress is bad because uh, she can't really do much right now. Stress will make your character snap, essentially. Sure. And when that happens, uh, they become a greater risk of getting a heart attack. So essentially, stress is the real enemy. I can always heal. Stress is much, much trickier to actually do something about. As in real life. Just in real, exactly. Uh, but I'm about to finish this guy off here. There we go. Not too shabby. So he just got a little bit of stress healed, but it's, it's tricky. It's not very common. So these are a bunch of items. Here's some blood. Okay, that's good. Give it to him. Now that kind of, you know, gets him back under wraps there. He's not going to fall apart on me. All right, move these guys around a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's keep going. So he's got a negative quirk, as they call it. He automatically ran up and checked that body, which was not a great idea. Okay. <laughs> they have psychological quirks. These are the characters. Actually, I'll show you really quickly here. So you can see here, a lot to take in, uh, but you see the quirks in the upper left-hand corner. <laughs> okay. The ones on the left in yellow are positive. Sure. They're helpful. The ones on the right are 
negative. They are bad. Right. So it might make the character do something obsessive, like they might check uh, a dead body because they're obsessed with death, for instance. Who among us can resist exactly. the tantalizing pleasures of touching a dead body? This game is uh, very realistic, if nothing else. Spirits are lifted. Okay, let's just keep going here a little longer. I do want to check out the actual Crimson Courtyard itself, the new area in the game. So we'll give this another room or two, and if we don't find this uh, fanatic, we'll just move on. Okay, so there is this, So even though these areas are procedurally generated, there is kind of an overarching story that you're progressing. There is. Um, it's basically the narrator that you're hearing, the awesome Wayne June, is... Um, oh, wasting. Yeah, see, needs blood. Uh, Wayne June is your ancestor, and he has summoned you to this world uh, to sort of reclaim his honor. There's an interesting cinematic that shows him offing himself in the beginning of the game. He has excavated Jeez. some kind of um, force or something. It's not very okay. clear. Uh, and the surrounding countryside has become uh, sort of a, a mockery of, of its former self. So you are one of his uh, descendants called upon to restore order. And in doing so, you create an enormous uh, um, a, enormous pile of bodies from all the people that you bring in to try and uh, fix it up. So. Sure. You can see my highwayman there doing auto reposts against enemies that attack him, which is an awesome ability. That's cool. So he's just dishing out damage constantly. So these are um, these enemies we're seeing here are actually bloodsuckers. These are the new class of enemies in the game. Oh yeah, look at those little blood sacks they've got. Yeah. There. So when they when they do a, a feeding, ooh, uh -oh. I just lost the character. Oh no! Wait. So are they dead or They're are they dead. turned? They're oh. dead. So he, he oh. uh, who was it? It was the, uh, oh, the Vestal died. Okay, not oh good. My. That was my healer. So that seems like a stressful event. Yeah, exactly. So I didn't feed her enough blood. I, I have no blood at all, actually, right now. So uh, didn't didn't manage my resources as well as I could have on that one. Yeah. Well, you're, you're kind of doing two things at once. I so am so We won't judge you too harshly. That's right. What, uh, so I remember when this game came out, um, hearing kind of uh, a lot of fervor about corpse management like when people died you had yeah. to carry those is that i don't i'm not seeing a corpse of your yep you are right though um so corpse management of the enemies you don't ah. actually you don't actually encounter that as a uh, uh your when your party members die they just disappear they just, okay but enemies will stay there and that is a very big part of the game so i think we should just call it a day i, I don't I'm, i still have yet to fight this fanatic Okay. Uh, but I do want to show you a peek at the Crimson Courtyard itself. So let's just, I can escape at any time. Yeah, let's jump out. I am, uh, God, now I'm going to walk around the rest of my day just fearing <laughs> that the fanatic's going to pop out around any corner. So this is another interesting thing is you can bail on a mission at any time. Interesting. Okay, and so it's mission-based. It's mission-based, okay. yes. And the missions are, you know, it's it might be... Uh, complete all of the uh, all monster rooms, like uh, kill all of the rooms with monsters in them, or it might be explore ninety percent of all the rooms. So this is my hovel or my uh, my my town, and this is the stagecoach where I can recruit new new characters. I think I will actually uh, grab that hound master right there. Here's the tavern for stress relief. So you can see the stress is persistent. I have to booze these guys up. Oh, man. Get them to, like, booze up so that they... Re <laughs> Isn't this crazy? They should find a healthier way of dealing with their stress. There are there are other other ways, although negative... Like gambling. Gambling. <laughs> uh, there's a, a brothel as well, if you're ah, that kind of person. Sure. But there's also uh, the church, oh. you know, and you can meditate. Okay. And however, uh, different characters have randomly assigned uh, negative quirks, and some characters will not do certain stress release activities. Interesting. Yeah, you know, there's all this robust, you know... You can see all the different skills I could be upgrading right now. Sure. Tons of that stuff. Wow. I can be upgrading weapons and armor. Oh I just don't have God. the money for it right now. So did did you lose all the loot that you're... No, I grabbed okay. the, the good stuff back. Here's okay. all my loot right now. It's a lot of loot. Yeah. And I'm assuming only classes can use certain things. Yeah, you can do it by... Let's see. I can sort it in different ways. This is by trinket name. Class restrictions. So that's... Um, that's a, uh, a leper, that's a great item, that's a great item. So some of these are f useful for anybody, like okay. your, your good old slippery boots. 
uh, sure. increase your dodge, which makes it harder for ah, enemies to hit you. Yep. Uh, other items might, that's more dodge, uh, increase the chance to inflict bleed, which is damage over time, okay. uh, or get more at max, ex uh, max HP. Now, one of the things that's interesting about items in this game is they tend to have two, they're kind of dual pronged. Like, they give you something good and then they take away something good. Sure. It is the tendency. So not all of them, but many of them. Okay. Uh, actually, so let's, let's quickly uh, go to the Crimson Court. That's this one here. Okay, so you use the caravan as kind of this is the map of everything you can do. This is the this is my my state map exactly. So I can decide who I want to have in here. So because of the types of enemies I'm going to fight here, I'm going to go with a little bit of a different mix. So that was one of my questions. You know, I um, in XCOM for example, which I've played a lot of. Um, Depending on how the run is going, I have my kind of core four, or at a certain point, kind of core six group of like, these are my hero soldiers. Right. When one of them goes down, it, it's devastating. But it's really only then that I bring someone new in. Like mm. I'm not, I'm not someone that's kind of managing, making sure that like everyone in the barracks is kind of leveling up. Is it? Are you constantly switching your characters? Uh, you are switching them around a lot, partly because um, it is kind of easy come, easy go. Like you will lose people in this game. Okay. And they tend to be a little less, I might say, slightly less unique than what you might encounter in XCOM. The quirks, the positive and negative quirks, do have a big impact, uh, but maybe not quite as much so as you might encounter in XCOM. Where, uh, oh, really? Yeah, there's, um, it's, a, it's a little bit unique in, in that regard, but uh, generally I, I set all my characters up with the same basic... Uh, you know, skill sets, because there's cer there's a certain combination that I really like in this game. Okay. Uh, so to go to the Crimson Courtyard, um, you have to use an invitation, which I have a number of them, and then you have to uh, provision. So I'm going to take a bunch of food here. Isn't cool. this crazy? <laughs> yeah, this is wild. Take some shovels for digging treasure. For, okay. Or uh, removing obstacles. Those okay. are cr critical at times. I definitely am going to want bandages out the wazoo. Don't need any herbs. It's not that useful, but I will take some poison antidote. And I'll take, uh, now if I take holy water and put it on my crimson curse guys, it'll like destroy them. Oh, they're, they're basically vampires, you know? So I see you have one uh, person in your party who is not uh, afflicted? Correct, here? yes. Okay. And do they, by hanging out with the rest of this sick crew, have a chance to get sick? Uh, not in combat, but if I put them in a stress relief activity, so I don't have enough blood back at headquarters, uh, there's a supply. Oh. So somebody might die because they might starve to sure. death. But what are you going to do? Well, I that's the true Darkest Dungeon experience, That's right. right? That's okay. right. We've already lost one person today. That's right. So to answer your question, though, if my unafflicted character is in the same stress release activity as uh, as an infected character, there is a chance they'll get infected as well. So mm. uh, generally it happens through combat. That is the primary Stay way. Stay away from the brothel. If, that's uh, right, that's right. <laughs> you see some sick people in there. Um, and very quickly, I'm gonna alter a skill here. I'm gonna say, I want a bleed skill, yeah. So what what is, what is new about this area? Um, from the original base game. So take everything I just told you and throw like maybe 50% of it out. Oh, perfect. Uh, they okay. change it all up. So the torch light at the top, you notice it is now a dull pulsating oh, red. Yes. The, the torch light mechanic is no more. Um, they changed how it works here. It is now a, um, that is essentially indicating, I think it's called blood moon or blood light or something like that. You can bleed far, far easier in the, uh, the crimson courtyard. Um, and it basically torches work differently. They just give you a buff now, okay. uh, a buff to your accuracy, and I think a few other things as well. So still valuable. Valuable, but not as valuable, right? Gotcha. Oh, there's a trap. Ooh. <laughs> Watch your oh, and that hurt. Look how much damage that did. Sorry, w was that represented in kind of the art in some way? Or? So on the map, you want to keep an eye there. If I had done a scouting, uh, and that's that ring you'll see burst out now and then. It'll sometimes spot a trap, but I noticed in dark in the Crimson Courtyard, it does not appear to actually ever show traps. Oh. So again, uh, works a little bit different. Everything's a little different here. Do you, or do some characters have like a role that like if they encounter a trap, they can dodge it or something? They're better at di disarming it if you can see it. Uh, but again, in Crimson Court, I, I can't recall actually ever seeing on the map a trap that allowed me to disarm. So I think it works a little differently. This is a new character, new for Crimson Court. This is uh, the Flagellant. 
He's a religious zealot who uh, loves to inflict bleed damage on himself and okay. can heal by doing that, so he's very unusual. Interesting. But he's great at bleed, and uh, these bloodsuckers here are weak on that, so uh, I'm going to do that now. So bleed is awesome for damage over time, uh, and on tough enemies, it's a way to wear them down. Okay. Actually, rather quickly, uh, if you know what you're doing. Here's my uh, occultist. This guy's awesome. He's a healer combat. He's sort of like a battle mage. So the folks in the back are always the hardest to hit. Oh, see, he's mutating into like a mosquito guy, you know? Oh. Yeah, it's pretty weird, right? This, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a game that is more uh, macabre yeah. uh, than this. <laughs> I, I love the art style, though. It's really cool. So I'm just going to try and stack this bleed damage as much as I can. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, do, you, do you think it's the kind of like the, the tone and the setting uh, that has drawn you in, or is it really the mechanics? I think it's a combination of all of it. Like, I really enjoy uh, the aesthetics for sure. Uh, hit all three of them. Uh, I really like the combat, though. I think the combat is a, a really interesting approach. Um, I, I like, I've said this before, it's kind of an odd statement. I tend to really like Western uh, turn-based tactics games. Sure. I'm less experienced with the Eastern sort of school of it. Right. Um, but I loved growing up. I loved uh, all the Gold Box, SSI, Dungeons and Dragons games. I loved uh, XCOM. So I love like sort of the, just the Western take on the genre because I don't know. It's got some some unique elements to it. The permadeath yeah. tends to be a common element. I like games that are sort of high stakes. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. Did you ever play uh, Commandos? Uh, you remember those games? Commandos. Not sure I do. No. What what system? It was a PC series early on. Oh, top down third. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Isometric turn base. Yeah, I was not very good at them, but I do recall. Oh, that was a good hit. So I, I'm curious, uh, your relationship with this game was it love at first sight? Was it? Did you pick it up and ne never put, still haven't put it down? So. The f I remember being intrigued because I love uh, Lovecraftian stuff. Sure. Like, that's a huge draw for me. And I knew this game had a little bit of that going on. I didn't know how much. That's always a question. Uh, and I fired it up when my, bro my little brother was in town. I fired it up. Oh, if I had blood here, I could actually give it to that beggar and, and get some treasure for it. But uh, I fired this game up, and I had no idea what I was doing because it is a lot to take in. This is not a low learning curve title. Interesting. So I can actually do... Yes. I got... This is huge. I've never actually successfully done this. So check this out. I'm going to actually... I'm going to camp. So there's a whole camping dynamic in this game. And you can heal. You can get some stress release back. Um, Looks like a merry, a merry camp. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So I can uh, do all kinds of buffs and stuff here. Although okay. my guys are in bad shape. So they're not really playing very nice with this. So, so wait, so you found some treasure, so now you can camp, or...? I, I found a wine crate, which you can use a shovel on to get firewood. Okay. That allows me to then set up camp, ah. that it allows me to buff myself or heal myself. Ah. So, just kind of an interesting little take here. I can, you know, heal him. The buffs are the best part. Um, but the, these characters, I don't have very good buffs with these characters, unfortunately. Like, I could do this one, for instance, that would reduce everyone's stress enormously, but would impact my speed and accuracy. I'll do that. So again, stress being the biggest enemy right. in this game. So I did a pretty good job of getting rid of some of that stress there. Uh, to answer your question, though, I played it, uh, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I went straight for the Darkest Dungeon, which they do allow you to do right in the beginning of the game if you want to, and got completely annihilated, because my characters were all level zero, and said, what is this game? And so I became kind of fascinated with it. And I think it was the complexity of it. Mm -hmm. It was, it's like a, a big Rube Goldberg machine. And I was trying to figure out kind of how it all worked and all the, like, you know, what do you do with this? There's actually, if I had the right item, I could, I could use a certain item on, on this and have a better chance of getting better loot. Uh, I will simply skip it for now. Um, so the Crimson Courtyard. Oh, here's another one. I never get these. Nice. So I got another... Uh, camping log. Cool. It's the first time I've ever actually successfully done that. 
How how good is the game at kind of telegraphing what you can do and or what kind of what things mean? Super mysterious. Okay. Like you'll figure it all out. What I ended up doing is I went on game FAQs. Sure, sure. And I Shout spent out. <laughs> you know, twenty twenty minutes, half an hour just researching like which are the best characters, which are the characters that are recommended, you okay. know. And that that opened the door. It allowed me to really uh, kind of hone in on successful uh, party party builds, basically, which is a big part of it. Like in the beginning, I had no idea, um, you know, sort of the benefits of these different characters and how they could really be set up nicely. Which skills are the are the best to use in different positions? And once you find a mix that works, you tend to stick with it. You know. Oh, now I just lost somebody. Oh, jeez. Devastating. Another one bites the dust. That's right. Ooh. Ouch. Oh, that's a repost. I didn't know enemies could do that. So yeah, it's um, there's it's there's a lot to figure out. It's somewhat inscrutable, um, but that's part of the fun. Has uh, this new DLC kind of changed any of the onboarding or the early game stuff at all? Um, I think it's really intended for folks who know the game well. Okay. So it just, if anything, muddies the waters further and makes it um, just a whole lot of new mechanics, a lot of new. Uh, uh, items to interact with, new enemies that behave in totally different ways. Like I just said, oh, repost? I didn't even know that was a thing. Right. So, you know, the game has a tendency, uh, even just the base game, has a tendency to surprise. Okay. And there's a real satisfaction, just like at XCOM, of beating the odds and sort of saying, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm going to survive this. I'm going to go for it. Right. And then actually uh, making it work. And then beating a retreat, going home with all your treasure, some new items, you know, your characters are sure. leveling up. Uh, it's very satisfying. So. Does, does the g game at all kind of telegraph a percentage of kind of the dice roll of kind of you're this likely to hit this person? It does. So if you look, when I highlight th one of these characters on the right side in gold, it says, you know, oh, hero oh, to Oh, there it is. There it is. Hero okay. to crit. Got um, it. That makes sense. Yeah. And then there's, you can see resistances below that. Um, right. Stun, okay. Stun, blight, bleed, etc. Right. Shows what their different skills are, all that. So, anyway, you're hanging in there. You made right. it. That's right. That's right. I got some well, items from my dead guy, unfortunately. So, I think. What do you think? You seen enough? Can you make a I, uh, I, judgment on this? I've seen a lot. I feel like there's a lot that I still don't understand. <laughs> um, but you sold me, Sid. I, yeah. I, I, I want to pick this up. I, so I've actually, I, I've already, I bought it, but have done nothing more than just simply open it up. Mm -hmm. um, but I could see myself really getting into this. I, um, I think if I can get over kind of that initial hump, mm -hmm. um, there's certainly a lot to sink your teeth into. Tons to sink your teeth into. One of my favorite games in years. So uh, thanks for joining me, Zach. Thanks for showing it. PlayStation.